Latitude 50 degrees north, longitude 66 degrees west. 200 miles north of the St. Lawrence River port of Seven Islands. This is a land of abundant water, rolling hills and iron ore, Wabash Lake, Labrador. On the south shore of the lake, the gleaming metal covering of the Wabash Iron Company's preliminary ore processing plant stands out above everything else. Because of iron ore, Wabash Iron has a neighbor in this vast wilderness. Across the lake is the Carroll Lake property of Iron Ore Company of Canada. Wabash Iron has been at the property since 1957, following a carefully planned program for bringing it into large-scale production in an orderly way by 1965. Temporary housing was the first necessity. Nothing fancy, but adequate and comfortable, including living quarters, plus kitchen, dining hall, laundry, and recreation facilities for over a hundred men. In 1961, Wabash Iron will start a $5 million building program here to provide housing for the 1,200 men needed when construction of the future mining and processing installations gets underway. Air transportation is essential for men and supplies in a remote area. This 6,000-foot airstrip was built big enough for large four-engine aircraft and there is now regularly scheduled commercial airline service. This is part of the Wabush ore body. Clearing the land is the first step in opening one of several small mining pits to get ore for testing in the plant, which has been in continuous operation since early 1960. The bulldozer is followed by an earth mover that loads itself in removing the shallow layer of earth covering the ore. Tall drill rigs put down a carefully set pattern of holes to sample the chemical content and structure of the ore. A great amount of exploration drilling must be done before an ore body can be mined. Well over 30,000 feet of drilling has already been done and the program is continuing. After blasting, the ore varies in size from big chunks to very fine particles. It is soft enough to break with a fairly light blow. The Wabush ore is low grade in its natural state and requires extensive processing to be usable. The crude ore needed to test various processing methods in the plant is taken from the test pits and a stockpile. A diesel-powered shovel is used to load the heavy-duty trucks hauling ore from the pits. Smaller trucks are used at the stockpile because of the shorter haul and better road. At the plant, ore is dumped into a storage bin that feeds into a crusher. After crushing, it is conveyed to the next structure for screening. Then it goes into the large mill building. Here it is ground down in a rotating drum to a size fine enough for the ore to be separated from the waste in the last stages of the concentrating process. Wabash Iron has spent about $3 million to construct the plant and other facilities at the property. In June of 1960, Premier Joseph Smallwood of Newfoundland and Mr. Gordon Pushy, Director General of Economic Development for the province, visited Wabash Lake to see the plant in operation and other progress in developing the property. From the first, 
the government of Newfoundland has been most cooperative on the many matters that must be resolved in starting and carrying on a major mining project. The concentrated ore leaves the plant in a small but steady stream for haulage to stockpile. Trucks back up on the stockpile for dumping. Because of the type of ore, the individual particles sparkle in the sun. After only five months of plant operation, the stockpile looked like this late in July 1960. It contained about 30,000 gross tons of concentrates. By the end of the year, production had reached 50,000 gross tons. Total expenditures on the overall project by the companies that own Wabash Iron, Steel Company of Canada, Youngstown Sheet and Tube, Inland Steel, Pittsburgh Steel, Interlake Iron, and Pecan's Mather exceeded $26 million through 1960. In August 1960, railroad tracks were laid alongside the stockpile so that the first of three large shipments of concentrates, about 42,000 gross tons in total, could be sent to steel plants of some of the Wabash Iron owners for sintering and blast furnace tests. The shovel moves progressively along the pile filling the cars, bucketful after bucketful. These shipments and the steel plant tests prove the handling and the movement by rail and vessel of the concentrated ore in bulk, and more importantly, its use in the sintering process and as a blast furnace feed to be entirely satisfactory. It is a long-standing tradition in the iron ore industry to carry a spruce tree at the head of the first car of ore shipped from a new property. The cars are loaded and waiting as one of the engines arrives and the highball signal is given. There are many sweeping curves along the 37-mile railway Wabash Iron and Iron Ore Company of Canada built jointly to connect their properties with the Quebec North Shore and Labrador Railway. The scenery all the way to the railway's southern terminal at Seven Islands is beautiful, sometimes spectacular, and seemingly everywhere there is bountiful water. Part of a Labrador's abundant water will play a vital role in Wabash Iron's future operations. Hydroelectric power to be generated at Twin Falls on the Hamilton River, 100 miles north of Wabash Lake, will be needed to run mining and processing equipment. At an ore dock at Seven Islands, the cars are pushed into the car dumper for unloading. carried to the dock on parallel conveyors and then fed into the vessel's holds from loading towers. After navigating the St. Lawrence Seaway and three of the Great Lakes, the vessel nears Indiana Harbor at the lower end of Lake Michigan. They're at a steel plant a huge bucket unloads the first shipment and dumps it on the dock. At Point Noir, Quebec, 
across Seven Islands Bay from where this cargo was loaded. Wabush Iron has started construction of an ore loading dock and a 25 mile railway to connect the harbor site with the Quebec North Shore and Labrador Railway. This and related work there will cost over $15 million. And with the $5 million in housing to be built at the property, Wabush Iron has in 1961 committed an additional $20 million to further progress in developing the Wabush Lake project.